my name's Raj Patel, and I'm an activist and an academic based in the United States. So governance is the, is the cluster of rules and ideas and prejudices that shape the way we move in the world. I mean, it's, it's, it can be anything from just, for example, the layout of a supermarket. It, it, it's a weird thing to, to compare to governance, but look, the milk is always at the back in supermarkets, right? It's always at the back. Why? Because that's where they, they, they want to, to uh, get you going through all the store and then coming all the way out to the front to try and get you to impulse purchase uh, your way through to the store because the milk is the, the, mon the main thing that you're in the store to buy. Now, that's an odd analogy for global governance, but actually it, it's, it sort of works because um, the idea is that there are some sort of very concrete ways that we understand government, um, you know, the people we vote for and um, the, the, uh, the parties that we are affiliated to. But the idea of global, global governance is much more subtle. It's um, about the ideas that, that we often don't question, that, that are embedded in us, uh, and ideas that cover the world that seem perfectly normal. Ideas, for example, like white supremacy, for instance. I mean, you know, the, the, these are ideas that um, form part of the texture of the way the world works. Uh, and, you know, obviously you have, you know, you can see white supremacy alive and well in the United States or in Europe. But even the, the idea of, you know, sort of norms of beauty and of, uh, of, of you know, fairness in, in India, for instance. I mean, you, you see this, the, these, these strange norms that make themselves manifest through, through ideology and through the apparatus of the state. So you, you have ideas ideologies, but you also have the police. And the things that get policed give you a sense of, what, of how global governance works. Global governance works in the, you know, the, the domains of private property, uh, of creating new properties like intellectual property, like you know, being able to buy and sell the, the genetic material of seeds, being able to buy and sell uh, you know, the, the, the spectrum uh, so that you can chop up uh, the spectrum and have uh, cell phone service providers buying bits of the, of the infrared spectrum or the ultraviolet spectrum, whatever it is. Um, so you have uh, this, this, these mechanisms of governance that are about the police, about ideology, about property. Um, and those forces are sometimes very obvious, like the World Trade Organization, but sometimes very subtle, like the ideas that we carry in our hearts, you know, whether it's about supremacy, about patriarchy, or whatever it is, uh, that, um, that also form part of that texture of governance. There are no winners um, in at the end of the day. Uh, this, the, 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 the system of capitalism that has that has produced the world that we live in, that is generating the sixth extinction, um, that is uh, causing trauma and w will undoubtedly create far more trauma in, into the future, um, is something that, that affects everyone. Um, now, part of the you know, in the old days we had this idea of false consciousness. So there were there were some people who just couldn't be worked with because uh, they were beyond the pale. But I think th you know the, the idea of finding what it is that. Uh, that, that most people have in common. I mean, I, th I think we, you know, we, we have an idea of who the enemy is, of uh, large transnational corporations, of the plutocrats, of the people who buy the political system. Um, but th and, and the easy thing is to find our allies in communities around the world who are uh, peasants who are fighting the, the, the food system and the working class and um, you know, uh, women who are oppressed by, uh, by patriarchy. And we, we, we can join together in our oppression. And that's the, the, the people who are very close to the choir. Uh, but I, I think part of the, the movement building that needs to happen, particularly at this moment, is for these movements to be articulated. So you have Black Lives Matter in the United States. Um, you have uh, the, you know, the March for Women's Lives. You have uh, amazing movements of resistance in India around patriarchy. You have uh, you know, 350.org. And you, you have a, a range of movements at the moment. And I think what, what's important is not only that those movements continue to pull new people in, but there be some articulation between them, a recognition that actually these struggles are joined not just in, th in theory but in practice. So back in the olden days when we had this very crude idea of Marxism, there seemed to be just one dimension of the transformation agenda, which was, you know, the, the working class must seize the means of production and everything's going to be great. Uh, we, we understand now that, that there's, there's much more to the way that capitalism operates than just uh, alienation from the means of production. Um, we understand that there's a, a dimension in terms of, uh, of race, of, cl of gender. We understand that there's a, an ecology to the way capitalism, capitalism has its own ecology. Uh, and so one of the ideas that, that uh, myself and my uh, comrade Jason W. Moore have been working on is this idea of seven cheap things. Uh, that, that there are 
uh, you know, we, we, we've sort of identified these sort of seven areas in which you have cheap labor, cheap uh, nature, cheap fuel, cheap food, cheap uh, debt, uh, cheap uh, care or reproductive labor, and cheap lives, which is the idea of lives being cheapened by the, uh, the power of the, the, you know, of the police, of the military, and of a certain kind of ideology. And those are all dimensions that intersect. Um, you know, if, if you want an example of that, think of apartheid South Africa. In apartheid South Africa, there was this debate about, well, is it class or is it race? Which dimension matters most? And I think the, the, the answer to that question was, well, it's both, isn't it? I mean, it's both class and race that, that matter in the construction of apartheid South Africa. But actually, it wasn't just class and race, but it was you know, what, what, what we're suggesting is a, a range of things, these seven, these seven dimensions. And uh, at the end of the day, I think we, we won't be liberated until we've addressed them all.